adding, take away, dividing, times, we do uh, fractions. That's a list that adds up to pupils at Eleanor Palmer Primary School achieving well above average results in maths. Over four programmes, we're looking at how they teach mathematics across Key Stage 2. Head teacher Kate Froude is also the maths coordinator and has some basic guiding principles. One of the principles of headship I would have is it's my job to, to develop enthusiasm and to build confidence. And I don't think you do that by being top heavy and frightening teachers with the need for evidence. And I think that I have to, to build that confidence by modelling it and by letting, you know, saying, give it a go, try it. And by saying, giving them licence to make professional judgments and not say, but I've got to go on to shape because it says, I hope that what I've created is, you judge that they're not ready, it's fine by me. Right, so ping, hong, hong, ping, three, twelve. This is year five, four with their teacher, three, Sally Hill. One, four, the lesson six, is all about seven, consolidating four, their times tables. Four, a key topic in year four. Seven. Twenty-eight. Four. Sixteen. Seven. Twenty-eight. The purpose of the lesson was to actually teach them the time, four times table um, and to actually teach them how they can apply the number facts of the four times tables to other calculations. Do you notice any kind of pattern that you can see? Any pattern with these multiples of four? Tasneem. In the first half it's <coughs> four, eight, two, six, zero, and then it's same again. Tasneem, fantastic. She's noticed that's the last digit. So we've got these digits, which goes four, eight, then the last digit's two, six, zero. And then when you move up here, that pattern repeats in the last digit. And it's four, eight, two, six, zero. Right, I've got a hundred square here, and I've highlighted all of the multiples of four up to 40. Just looking at this pattern, can you now turn to somebody next to you and just tell them, give them two or three other numbers that will come up at multiples of four. Here, you turn to Kobe. There's times where I break where we go into talk partners, for example, which gives those who are, who are a little less confident to actually have a go, talk it, talk it through with a partner, and, um, and then they can feel confident about putting their hands up. All right, and now everyone back this way. Good boy. Who can tell me another multiple of four that's going to come up on this hundred square? Ahmed. 44. Yeah, good boy. Let's have a look. Yes, and that continues the pattern. OK. So we've got all of the multiples of four here. If my number line, my number stick here, went out of the window, down the road, maybe down to Kentish Town Tube Station, maybe further, what numbers, or multiples of four, might I find on this stick? Um, let's have... OK, I'm going to ask Damien. 200. 200, exactly. So once you've gone through 104, 108, it will eventually get to 200 again. Good boy. Right, Jasper, what else? 40 billion. Why 40 billion, Jasper? Because if you're... Um, if 40's... Um, um, the, like, um, 10 times 40, you could do... Um, you could just um, go on until you get to 40 billion. You could just add zeros and yes. you just keep it. So maybe not such a big number. Joseph? You could have 100, 196. And how do you know 196 will be on this number line? Because 100 is a multiple of 4 and 96 is a multiple of 4. So if you add them together, you get 196. So there's, you know, obviously certain questions I expect certain children to answer. But there's, you know, there, most children, you know, most children had their hands up today, which was really good because they were really following the lesson. I know that these are multiples of 4. How do I know that? The last two digits ha all have um, four times tables on. OK, good girl. The last two digits are multiples of four, and we can see them, can't we, on this, on this number square. Guy, can you give me a four-digit number, please? In here? Yeah, four-digit number that's a multiple of four. 44? Four digits. So, 44, what could come oh, first? 4,000... 4,000 and... 988. 
and 88. Fantastic. Good boy. Right. Question number one is three times four. So just write down the answer. Next, a four times tables test with some challenge questions thrown Everyone in. Everyone can have a go at that one. Now listen, because this is one of the challenge questions. Have a go if you can. It's 40 times 400. Six times four. Six times four. Six times four. 22 times four. So there's another challenge question there. During the test, one pupil works on the computer with support staff on a simpler version of the same task. Oh, four times four is sixteen. Now be ready for another challenge question. Question number fourteen. Six times four is Oh, look at twenty plus another four. Let's see if we can count on twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. Good boy. We also looked at once you know this what else do you know what how, how can you apply this knowledge to other areas of maths um, and i think the children really grasped it um, and were able to move on in that way one the first question i asked was 40 times 400 who who managed who actually got this one right who managed to get this one right joseph was it 100 100 um, 16000 it was 16,000, wasn't it? So, how, how, how can I work this out? Um, Tasneem? You just um, do four times four and then add three zeros up here. Right, then I shift those zeros over. Let's have a look at this one. 22 times four. So it's getting, this is a little bit more complicated, but we can all do it. If we can do the four times tables, we can do a calculation like this. Who wants to have a go then at working this out with me? Sam. 10 times 4 is 40, okay, and then so you double 40 to make 80, and then you add 8, so it's 88. So I could just go, I could just jump, I could go 20 times 4 first, couldn't I? I do like your method though, I do like, I'm just going to write it like this, so 20 times 4 is 80, 80. good boy, and then 2 times 4 is 8, then 2 times 4 is 8, and then what do I do? Add them together. Add them together, good boy. And it makes 88. That's Fantastic. OK, now talk to the person next to you and tell me how you're going to solve this, this particular calculation. OK, so quickly turn to the person next to you. Boys as well as 400. Claudia, how are we going to solve, how will we solve that question? Do you do 40 times 4? You do do 40 times 4. That's a great place to start there, Claudia. 40 times 4. Grace, could you tell me, can you tell me how to work out 40 times 4? Um, 4 times 4. Yeah, I do 4 times 4 is 16 and I then add 0. Add the zero. So that's 160, good. What's the next step then, Claudia? Five times four. It's five times four, good. Which is? Um, it's 20. And then what do I do? Add it up. Add it up. Jasper, what have we learnt today? You know your four times table, you can do much more bigger sums. Once you know these times tables facts, you know, you, there's so much more you can do. And it's essential at this age that they grasp it before things start to get really hard in year five and year six. Some of the time, selected pupils work outside the classroom playing dice games. Well done. This game is right double doubling to help them with their four times tables. So it's double three is six. Mm. Sixes. Twelve. Well done. Pick your counter. Have you got it? Right, that's where you're going. Right. We're just, um, basically, it's working on their two times table, and then we've gone from doubling to double doubling, which is, what, what table is that? It's your four, isn't it? So we used to do, like, just what, throw one number and double it, and then we've gone from doubling to double doubling. No. Oh, do you want to let me think? I suppose any abiding principles would go back to abiding principles of good quality teaching and learning, which would be active learning, enjoying learning, um, good subject knowledge, 
teacher enthusiasm, depth, um, and not paying lip service and working through schemes and skimming and moving on. And I suppose my emphasis would be that the teachers are first and foremost good teachers. And part of being a good teacher is being ready to learn, uh, being self-critical, um, always looking for improving. So if you've got that culture in your school, good maths, good geography, good history, um, it, it all kind of wraps into one. After school, the staff are meeting to find out more about the recently published revised primary framework for mathematics. You've got your themes, where all your objectives live, yeah? Strands, your big ideas. Then you've got your planning. September, July. OK, same for everyone, same ideas in each block. The presentation is given by the Year 6 teacher, who'd just come back from a local authority training seminar. OK, so this is all probing questions. Can they do this? Have you asked them if they can do this? Have they shown you? And then objectives are down there and I can statements. They then start looking at the online documentation that's available. So we go to unit C1. That's what you need to focus on, the blue being the most important. Here, this is, I think this is kind of like you could rehearse. Yeah. Objective. So then you that's go, the assessment. Where yeah. do you then find out any more about what? Do you, where were the lesson plans? Oh, and it's blue again. That's really handy. And, that's, that's and these your, are the activities. I think basically. it's six weeks, the first one. So that's two weeks. Your objectives and basically some probing questions to assess them. Well, that's quite good. Telephone. What were their first impressions? Well, I think that they've really honed in on the key objectives. That's my initial gut feeling though I couldn't really say for sure but it feels like they've really sort of honed in on the key objectives and that they've tailored the, the, the whole package around those key objectives, simplified it and actually refined it but yeah the maths, but also the maths is the same Yeah but with this real strong sort of theme of using and applying yeah. which obviously Which I think was which we Well we were doing that and I think yeah. lots of schools are actually doing that I think with this emphasis on using and applying um for for you know some yeah. practitioners in some schools, they will they will feel like it's a it's a large it's a bigger change because if using and applying isn't embedded within your maths teaching practice, then it's it's going to feel like a big change because it's so vital that children make connections to make progress in maths, and that's being acknowledged um, in this framework. So everyone's really got to jump on board with that, and then I think we'll see children making more progress, especially the children who are stuck somewhere in the middle <coughs> and don't don't progress quickly enough and find maths a real bind so I think I think it's it's fresh and new in that way in its message this what what's coming up in in this a lot is the things that we've always developed a sense I think yeah. are really matter making connections if we know this what else do we know um, knowing things inside out and round and about not just tables but knowing what doors that unlocks seeing the patterns that it generates that seems to be coming through and the kind of narrative guidance is good on that yeah good good, good prompt for questions yeah I think, you know, the changes for our, for our school will be, you know, like, like with any new format, it's just going to take some time.